uh, last uh, time. And then uh, we have these different relations. Uh, and then move into the, the Friedman. Uh, did you talk about Friedman equations this part last Saturday? Can you remember this? Or is this the place that we have to start? Nobody remember it? So did you, did you talk about Friedman equations, like the, about these two equations last time? Anybody remember about it? Okay, so we have, I guess, talked about the Friedman equations. Uh, right, thank you, Sajin. So which means I assume that, okay, anyhow, let me, just briefly explain to the case that we have in stock. So what, what we need to do here is maybe I have I explained this before as well. Now, once you know the, the robertson walker metric, which is the metric that explains the, uh, uh, the homogeneous and isotropic universe, from the robertson walker metric, what you can do is, and we have done this even for the Schwarzschild metric as well, what you can do is you can calculate the connection coefficients, right? So we have done this before, and you can use the same method, same equations to calculate the connection coefficients. And I am assuming that you have the knowledge to do this yourself, right? So that's why I am not, you know, doing all these calculations here. So once you calculate the connection coefficients, from the connection coefficients, you can calculate the Riemann curvature tensor, right? So that's how it works. And then you can use the connection coefficients, the Riemann curvature tensor. Uh, you can find the Ricci tensor and the Ricci scalar, right? And uh, you need to remember that that Ricci scalar is R, and we are also using the same uh, notation for the scaling factor like R T. So those two are two different things, right? So that's something uh, that you need to make sure that uh, uh, you. Uh, kind of you know make sure that yourself you can do all these calculations right i mean if anybody is interested you can i mean i mean i can provide how to do that but i am not going to do it in the class because it takes time right the only thing is you need to take some time to do all these calculations like you know calculating the amount of the tensor ricky tensor and all those stuff right so that is the only thing and uh, And then once you know all those components by combining those uh, with the uh, uh, what you call this uh, energy momentum tensor you can write the field equations right so once you write the uh, the field equations uh, you can solve the field equation to obtain these uh, two friedman equations right and uh, so these are the two friedman equations at the end that you will get uh, and uh, you can start uh, and follow this step and you can obtain these two equations at the end, right? So this is doable and you have, you now have the knowledge from the previous uh, chapters to do this, but I do not take uh, time from you to, you know, do all these calculations here. Uh, but if you do go through all these calculations, these are the two equations that you would get at the end, right? Right now. Let me, uh, sometimes if, if you go and look at a different textbook, you may uh, see uh, the same two equations, but in some different forms, right? That is okay. But here I am going to use these two forms here. And then you can see that in these two equations, you have uh, the density and pressure here, D and P, and those are defined in the equation 35 and 38 last time, right? Remember that I got these two equations. For the density, you can write 
uh, they mean in terms of matter density, radiation density, and the dark energy uh, density. And for the pressure, you can also have an equation for the cosmic pressure, which is equal to this one right here. Right now, you have an equation for the pressure and the density that is equation 35 and 37. So, all you need to do is take these two equations and plug it in this equation 38 and 39 so that you can write the same two Friedman equations by expanding the pressure and the density terms. Right? So, that's this is one equation like that. I guess let me. This should be actually should be simple right here. Right. And uh, so that's one equation. And then uh, you can uh, take the second Friedman equation and do the same thing, which will lead due to this particular equation right here. Right. And all these calculations you can do yourself, right? So what I have done here is just to guide you what to do. Just try yourself. You need to. So that's why I told you it is uh, not enough for you to just you know look at this note only, right? So make sure that. Uh, so when I tell that from this equation you can take this, you need to try and take it. So these are simple calculations. So that's why I I have not included you know step by step calculations here but you can always do it yourself right and uh, so i expect by the end of this course you should be able to derive all these things yourself so this is just kind of guidance for that and then actually i added this part very recently now once you now these are equation 40 and 42 by the way it's the same friedman equations but uh, these those are written in terms of you know by expanding uh, this pressure and density right in terms of matter radiation and dark dark energy densities and pressures right and uh, sometimes people uh, astronomers or cosmologists used to write these Friedman equation in terms of normalized scale factor as well right that's called a and it's a function of t and uh, what this normalized scale scale factor means is that we assume that currently which means at present time let's say at time t equal t naught this scaling factor is equal to one right now this scaling factor is uh, defined as the ratio of uh, the normalized scaling factor is uh, defined as the ratio of the scaling factor at any time t divided by the current scaling factor at time t equal t naught so assume that is the current time right now what this means is if you consider the present time at t equal t naught uh, this r also should go into r naught which is the scaling factor right now that will give you the scale the normalized scaling factor right now is should or should be equal to one right so that is the idea now you can take this scaling factor a uh, t and then plug that in one of these friedman equations let's say you go for the, the first friedman equation this one right here equation 38 in terms of r you replace that r by this equation right here r means a times r naught right and then yeah, everywhere that you have r you need to replace that from a r naught which is the new uh, which is basically writing the same Friedman equation using this normalized scaling factor and once you write it in that way this r naught will cancel out uh, you have one r naught here and this is r naught as well now that is a constant which is the scaling factor at t equal t naught so you can uh, remove it and then what you have is the Friedman equation now in terms of this normalized scaling factor right so just keep that in mind as well as a fact because uh, sometimes we used to uh, write the same Friedman equations using this normalized scaling factor as well right so I'm uh, putting it here 
just to make sure that if you read something else, you may have, you may uh, see that in some of the textbooks they used to, you know, derive everything from the scaling factor, which is which, which is uh, actually for a reason that you can interpret a lot of things uh, easily using the scaling factor. And what that also means is that if you compare uh, this term right here with what you have in the original field one equation, you will see that uh, 1 over r dr over dt will be equal to this 1 over a dA over dt, which is the normalized scaling factor. Now, if you remember this 1 over r dr over dt is defined as the Hubble parameter, and I actually ask you to remember it because uh, that is uh, a, a parameter which is uh, which you will see again and again, and it is important to remember that as well. Right? It's kind of you know like a definition, and uh, we can uh, derive the current value of the Hubble constant noise node also in terms of this normalized scale factor as well. So that's you know some some extra information that I put here about uh, different few different ways that you could write the field one equations. Now, as the next step, once you have the field one equations with you, uh, from these equations, you can actually, uh, you know, look at different cosmological models about the universe, right? Now, this will be our, you know, last section of this uh, course to look at different cosmological models now using the Friedman equations. Now, uh, actually, if you go for uh, uh, some of these models uh, with, you know, with curved spaces, you need to numerically solve these differential equations to get the answers, right? So because of that, I will not go into that particular region. However, we will discuss some of the simplest models that we can discuss using uh, these free fund equations just to give you an idea how these uh, equations are used in cosmology and uh, at the same time you will see that still from these simple models we can actually get an idea about some of the eras uh, i mean evolutionary phases of our universe as well now the, what we will look at uh, in today's class is First, we will look at an empty universe without matter, radiation, or dark energy. So that is one thing that we are going to look at as the first thing, which is the most simple module mathematically that you could talk. So we are going to look at a universe with empty, uh, which means uh, no matter, no radiation, and no dark energy. Right? So that will be the first thing that we are going to look at. And then uh, we will look at the universe with the source of dark energy only, right? And in fact, this is uh, the same case that Einstein attempted uh, when he was trying to fix his equation by introducing a cosmological constant, right? Remember that in uh, the topic about the field equation, we talked uh, how Einstein, Einstein tried to modify his field equation by adi adding this additional parameter for lambda, assuming that the universe is not expanding and uh, it should instead should be a static universe. And because of that, he added this extra term uh, called lambda, which uh, we used to tell as the cosmological constant at that time, right? So that is to represent a static universe. So we will discuss about that, but I have put here the the model with the dark source of dark energy. The reason is actually in late 1990s, we as cosmologists have you know observed that the universe is expanding. What that means, the universe is not, is not only expanding, it is accelerating, right? So if that is the case, the universe is accelerating, then you need to actually have this uh, what uh, have this cosmological constant in the uh, Einstein's equation, and it seems like this modified field equation seems to be correct now. However, 
the reason that Einstein put that connection uh, constant is to make a static universe, but you need the same value or the same uh, cosmological constant to explain this accelerating universe as well, right? Now we know that uh, according to current cosmological models, this uh, lambda parameter or the cosmological constant basically represents the, the source of dark energy, right? So we will discuss about that model and then we will uh, look at specially packed universes uh, with non zero values for the matter density, radiation density, and the dark energy density. So that means, uh, as the last step, we will look at uh, universes with k plus zero. It should be simple, okay. right? Modules with uh, one non zero value. So that means we will consider a universe that will have only the matter density, and then we will consider a universe that would have only the radiation density, and then a universe that is only with dark energy density. In fact, we have considered it in the previous case as well. Now, these models actually you need to remember or you need to know that uh, these models doesn't represent the universe as it currently exists, right? They are they are actually representation of different evolutionary histories of the universe. Right? Now, if you have started this last chapter, I assign you to uh, you know read. You probably now know that how the Big Bang happens and what kind of things, what kind of phases that the universe has gone through since then, right? And uh, so there are phases like matter dominated era, radiation dominated era, like that. So these models actually represent different eras and I will show you or I will discuss that with you. And then uh, uh, so let's go and now one last thing is these models uh, that is based on these Friedman equations are normally called as robertson Walker metric. Uh, sorry, robertson Walker. Uh, Friedman Robertson Walker models or FRW models. So that's how we, we used to call all these uh, models, different cosmological models of the universe. Right now, let's look at the first one. So that is the empty universe. So empty universe means radiation density, dark matter density, and the dark energy density, all of them should be zero. Basically, that means all these three components are zero and then rho should be equal to zero. And if rho equal to zero, you can go back to this uh, first uh, Friedman equation, uh, that is uh, this equation right here. And here, when you put rho equal zero, this term will completely go away. And what you would have is in the left hand side, one over r dr over dt squared and equal minus kc squared over r squared, right? So that is the only term that would remain here. And then if you take the square root of that, uh, I mean, you can understand what I, I have done here. And once again, this C should be velocity of light, therefore it should be simple. Right. Now, finally, we will have uh, an equation sum that is equal to minus kc squared and the square root of that. Now here, uh, to avoid the negative value inside the square root, uh, we know that this k is this uh, k is this uh, the parameter which we call the curvature parameter in uh, uh, the robertson Walker metric, and uh, it can take three values: plus one, zero, and minus one, right? And uh, if we take you know plus one, then you will have a minus sign inside the uh, you get like minus c squared. So that means you will get the minus sign inside the square root. Which which is, you know, it doesn't work mathematically because of that. Uh, to avoid that condition, we will have, look at or we will consider the values for k would be equal to either zero or minus one, right? Now, if it is uh, zero, then you know that the value dr over dt will become zero and then r will be a constant, right? So that will basically explain you the empty static flat Minkowski space, right? because the scaling parameter is a constant, so the universe does not change. And the next one is, 
uh, it could be that k equal to minus one mass. Well, if it is minus one, then what will happen is uh, dr over dt would become c. It means some reason all these places has typed as capital C, it should be simple. This is actually the velocity of the flight that we have here. And if you if you uh, take that velocity of light uh, as one, then what would happen is r uh, would be plus or minus t, and you can and you remove the minus t value, so it will be r to plus t. And uh, when the scaling parameter increases, this is how it will increase with the time, right? And uh, so let me just have the graph only here without the port. So it's like a linear increase, right? So that is our first model, and uh, which is the most simple one. And then let's look at this Einstein's model with the modified cosmological equation, right? And all of us know that Einstein added this cosmological constant uh, in search of a static universe. And the static universe means uh, dr over dt should be equal to zero, so which means you would have a constant scaling factor, right? If the universe is static, it is not changing now, so which means the scaling factor should be a constant. That is one condition that we know. And the modified field equation that Einstein had, and remember that we, we had this equation uh, previously, previous chapter, this is the modified equation. And uh, from that, if you derive uh, the Friedman equations starting from here, uh, starting from equation 47, where is that? This uh, should not be 47. I guess since I added some equations here, it should not be 47 now, it should be uh, 51. this one right here, right? It should be 51. Right, so just a correction, so I will upload the new one for you. And uh, you can uh, see that if you start from this uh, field equation and derive the, uh, the Friedman equation using this modified field equations, you will get these two equations, right? As the, the Friedman equations, uh, which has an extra term, lambda c squared over three, which uh, appears here as a result of having this new cosmological constant in the modified field equation, right? And we are what we are doing here is we are going to look at exactly that part. Now, one thing now that you need to remember here is in these two equations, this density value right here is actually without the dark energy density, right? Because uh, now we I have uh, separately considered the dark energy factor right here using the original modified uh, Einstein field equation. And it already have this, uh, the parameter to represent cosmological constant to represent this dark energy part, right? And because of that, then when you consider this density right here, that density means only the matter density and the radiation density, not all three types of densities, right? That is because when you consider or start from this equation, you have already taken the dark energy, uh, effect of the dark energy uh, into the account, right? So only thing is, I mean, Einstein was uh, deriving this, he did not know about the dark energy. He, what he did was, he was actually uh, having this term to stop the expansion of the universe and make it steady, right? But we know, now we know that when you add that, you should not have this dark energy term right here. And if you need, actually, you can get the same equations starting from here as well, where we had all these terms. And you can uh, take the lambda 
uh, rho lambda times separate and substitute uh, some of the some of the equations and take the same uh, two equations that you have here which you have derived from the original modified field equations right and uh, now if you go into uh, look at this equation the only difference between the, the previous Friedman equations with this one is that you have this extra lambda c squared over three term that came here as a result of including the cosmological constant right Right. Now then uh, you can easily see by using the relation in equation 29, which is given below. If you go back to equation 29, I think we have derived this uh, last Saturday. So that was uh, this equation right here. The dark energy density can be written as lambda C squared over 8 phi G. So that is how the dark energy density is you know, related with lambda parameter and I'm going to use this relation lambda c squared over 8 phi g here right here and uh, this so this relation right here where you had in equation 25 now you can uh, from here you can directly write 8 phi g over 3 times or lambda equal lambda c squared over 3 so that is just you know just is manipulating uh, this equation and then there is again for some reason this c's should be actually simple it shouldn't be capitalized so make that change here right yeah so we are right here so we have these two yes yeah, so you you have this relation right here and from that so the lambda c squared over 3 that you have in this Friedman equation in equation 52, you can replace that from 8 phi g over 3 times rho lambda and write this equation 55. It is the same equation. What you have done here is you just replace this part right here. So you had lambda c squared over 3 and uh, you can do the same uh, thing for the second Friedman equation as well. So that you would end up with having this equation right now for a static universe what could uh, happen is uh, scaling factor dr over dt should be equal to zero because it's a static universe that means the second derivative also should be zero and in addition to that the pressure also should be zero right uh, when you have the matter only universe uh, so that was what einstein was thinking at that time then this pressure will be also zero, right? So remember that condition with the dust, uh, this pressure also should be zero. And uh, as a result of that, uh, this uh, second Friedman equation that you have in equation 56 right here will become, this will become zero uh, now. And that's, uh, once it becomes zero, you have only rho here and then, uh, Right. And then dr over dt, the scaling factor that should be also equal to zero because we are in a static universe. And then uh, let me just check this equation here. I need to double check this one whether I just derived it and have it printed here correctly. That is. Uh, Yes, I guess that that's correct. So uh, at the end, what you will have is uh, 
at this relationship right here because you have the lambda equal 450 over c square and this is in fact is what Einstein called as the cosmological constant, right? 450 over c squared. So that is what he should have in his equation, uh, which should be the cosmological constant. And then uh, you can have uh, this value right here, 450 over c squared in the first Friedman equation, right? Because this is for the lambda and you can uh, take the first Friedman equation that is, uh, this equation right here, 52, and then plug the value of lambda here. And we know that for a static universe, this part should be equal to zero. So the zero will be equal to this, this one minus this one, plus uh, this term right here. And for the lambda, you can uh, substitute uh, 450 over C squared here. Let me change this to, there is again, let's see here. Right. So at the end, so once you have all these uh, things uh, plugged into the equation, the last equation will be Kc squared over R squared equal to 450. And uh, according to uh, this equation, Actually, this should be a 59, not 51. I think this, these numbers are changed a little bit, so I'm just modifying it due to the fact that I have added some new equations to the note. And uh, if you look at this particular expression that you have at the end after doing all those calculations for the static universe with this modified Einstein field equation, you can clearly see that this part right here, 450 should be a positive value. And because of that, K has to be one. Because C squared over R squared, we know it's a positive value as well. And on the right hand side, you should have a positive value. That means K can only take three values, minus one, zero, and plus one. And from that minus one and zero, you can directly remove here because it should be a positive value. And because of that, K has to be plus one, right? Now, what that means is, uh, if you derive everything from modified Einstein's field equation, the k has to be plus one. And what we know here is that uh, this is the static universe. And if k has to be plus one, then our static universe has to be positively curved, right? So that's how you interpret it. And this is uh, how the universe looks like according to the Einstein's modified field equation where I added this extra uh, term called uh, cosmological constant, right? And also from, uh, 59 here, you can actually take, and, uh, take a value for the so right here. Yes, you can take a value for the uh, for the R that is KC squared over 450 and once again it should be equal to 1 over lambda to the power 1 over 2, right? And I'm just, you know, going to a little bit quicker here because these are already written in the note. Anybody uh, who needs to go back and look at it, everything should be clear in the note, right? Now, the problem actually with this Einstein's uh, 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 static universe is that this is actually a very unstable universe. The reason is that if you, you know, change the value of uh, uh, change the values little bit, it will quickly become very unstable, right? And, uh, you know, at equilibrium, what would happen is this attractive force, which is uh, the densities, will exactly balance the repulsive force lambda. Remember that at that time, that was his idea, because his original equation, it seems that the universe is expanding uh, if we keep the equation in that way. So he needed to make it static. So he made a repulsive force, which is uh, from this uh, parameter lambda. And if it is in equilibrium, these two will be exactly balanced. However, what would happen is, is even if there is a very slight increase or decrease of the size of the universe, that is for the R naught, 
this will lead to runaway expansion or a runaway collapse which means again even with the slight change for the uh, size of the universe what would happen is the universe will either will be expanding forever or will become or will start to collapse right? that means uh, reducing the scale factor or reduce its size so this is uh, therefore this uh, even though we assumed a static universe it seems to be it is very unstable right for this reason and the interesting thing is now we are using the same uh, term which is lambda term to explain this uh, dark energy uh, accelerated universe because again the lambda term does the same thing because when the universe is accelerating it's kind of a repulsive force that acts against the gravity right so that's what has happened there and we will talk about that as well right now next uh, let's go into this dc term model and this is uh, again one uh, model that we are discussing and for this dc term model there was a dutch astronomer called william d sitter he proposed a model uh, which uh, is k equals zero and contains only dark energy right now in the previous uh, case uh, it's uh, it's a different one right so it's, it also talked about you know this cosmological constant but at that time uh, einstein was talking about that without knowing anything about the dark energy and also we did not uh, talk about the value of k initially so what we have done here is uh, we look at this uh, expression at the end and then uh, uh, logically uh, decided that k has to be plus one for a static universe and it has to be positively curved right now here what we are going to do is those three models uh, that we assume that we are in a k equals zero uh, universe and then uh, we are going to look at three models the first one is you have only dark energy and the second one is the radiation only and the third one will be the matter only universe and for all three universes, we assume k equals zero. Right? So that is, the universe is spatially flat. Right now, if you when you assume k equals zero and have only the dark energy, that means you will have only this pro lambda term here. Right now, uh, let uh, if you plug these values into equation forty. Now let me go back and look at equation forty. Whether it's correct or not? Yes. This is the equation for the first Friedman equation. Now here, uh, we only consider the dark energy, which, which means you don't have matter, you don't have radiation, so these two terms will go away. Well, and also k equals zero, so that means this term will also go away. And what you will have is 8, 5, g times rho lambda divided by 3. Right? So that is the only term that remains. So let's go and look at it. So that's what you have here and then you can multiply both sides by the r which is the scaling factor which you will end up having this equation now if you can integrate uh, both sides you will get a relationship something like this uh, because you will get one over r dr which is in the ln r and then this whole term is a constant and then it times t plus k and if you go through some of these calculations and some of the boundary conditions, what you will have. So, I am not going to explain that, right? So, I have some steps here, but it is your job to do the calculations and see uh, what I have written here is correct, right? So, if it is not correct, then let me know, right? So, what you will have after integration is that you will have any uh, expression as the solution something with something like this rt equal r0 times e to the power h0 times t minus t0 t0 is the current cosmic time and r0 is the current scale parameter and rt is the scale parameter at the time t and you can see that this is an exponentially increasing function right so which means with the time uh, our universe is uh, you know kind of expanding in an exponential manner right if you have only the dark energy so that is the effect of dark energy right and as the next model if you go and look at the same situation where k equals zero 
and uh, only the radiation uh, density is here in the universe, which means both matter and uh, uh, dark energy densities are zero. And if you go back again to the same equation, equation 40, and substitute or make rho m zero and rho lambda equal to zero, then you will have this equation, right? So you please go back and check it by plugging the values yourself and you will get this equation at the end. And then again, I have leave this to you as an exercise because it is just an integration. Uh, and this is also in the reference book as well. And basically, I am doing the same thing. And if you multiply both sides, you will get this equation right here. And then you have to integrate this to get an expression for the scaling parameter or the RT. And so if you integrate, what you will get is this equation right here, right? RT equal R0 times uh, T over T0 uh, to the power half, right? So that's how uh, the universe uh, is expanding according to the radiation only model. Right. And then let's look at the Einstein's DC term model. And this is actually uh, one of the, the models that are actually accepted at that time as a very good explanation of the universe, right? In 1932, the Einstein and D. Sitter proposed this model, uh, which is considered the mass only, right? So which means you have only the mass. Uh, so this, if we have mass only, we know that we, we normally consider a zero pressure. Uh, that means we have dust only, right? And then once you have the dust, all the pressure components will be zero, right? Remember, just go back to the note uh, and look at that. We have discussed that earlier. So that means uh, there are a lot of terms that will be equal to zero in that uh, metric, energy momentum metric. There will be only basically one term there. And uh, uh, this is, uh, we used to that this is a nice example for a Friedman universe, uh, which means dark energy and cosmological, or the cosmological constant. Both are the same. This has seemed to be zero, right? Now this model uh, is considered as a reliable model to describe the universe uh, for many years, and uh, this is due to two reasons. Uh, the one is that the universe is expanding, and this particular model, when you look at the result, it clearly shows you that expansion universe. And then the matter density becomes dominant over radiation density after. The uh, after some, after a very short period, right? So the most of the time in the past, the matter was dominating the universe. So it seems like this particular model, because we are only considering matter for the mass only, this model seems to be work nicely for the most part. Right? And however, this model finally rejected in late 1990s when the evidences, the, uh, in the cosmological, uh, cosmologists found the evidences for the accelerating universe due to the dark energy, right? Remember that I have mentioned this few times in you know late 1990s, 1998 or somewhere, uh, they they discovered this major discovery that the universe is it is expanding, and uh, this expansion is actually accelerating. Right? Uh, something is accelerating because what we know is all of uh, all of the the, four, the only force that we have, the only major force that we have is the gravity, right? From the gravity, we actually expected this expansion should be slowed down because of the attractive nature of the gravity. However, when you observe something that tells you that the universe is actually accelerating, none of these gravitational forces cannot explain it. Now, this is where we have we introduced this dark energy because there is some kind of energy that uh, act as uh, something as anti-gravity, which means uh, completely opposite to the gravity. So that is why our universe is accelerating, right? So this was discovered around 1998 or so, at late 1990s, and uh, which is you know around you know 20 some years back, not a long time ago. And uh, at this point, 
until that cosmologists used to believe this model as a very nice model that explained the explain the universe you know uh, nicely but uh, at the, after that time we now do not consider this model uh, as a good one to explain the current universe now at that point which means after uh, late 90s uh, cosmologists turned into dark energy dominated models uh, after that first this acceleration cannot be uh, explained uh, from the other models. Right? Now, if you consider this model, where you consider only the matter, again, we only consider k equals zero universe and the radiation and the dark uh, energy density both should be zero because we are only considering matter. And again, you have to go back to this first Friedman equation and make rho r and rho lambda make it to zero which will give you this equation again. And from that, just do the mathematics and integrate it. And as a result of that, you will get this equation right here, this one right here, right? So I have keep it as a question for you here, uh, using this condition that R equals zero. So that means the present time and the T equals zero. You need to show that rt equal r0 times t over t naught to the power 2 over 3 and this is basically to make sure that you understand and you do this yourself right otherwise when you see something like this in the exam then you probably won't remember because uh, everything is typed here and you don't know how to do it yourself so it is important that you know how to do it right? so make sure that you do these uh, calculations and check these in case if there is something that you cannot find, then let me know, right? So it is only if you have issues, I am going to discuss these type of things, right? Because these are straightforward calculations. And uh, the reason actually this model is very significant, if you, uh, you know, look at uh, how this expansion works here, you will see that this expansion is slowing down. I'm not sure. Yes, I, I just put some numbers and plot a small graph here to see how it looks like the expansion. And you can see from this red line, the expansion is a little bit slowing down and becoming a bit more stable, right? So it's you know curving towards the x-axis, and this is why that this model became very significant because. It represents a universe that is just enough to prevent the collapse, right? So it is not collapsing because if it is collapsing, it has to come towards this side, downside. It is not coming like that. So it has enough, uh, like um, it is like the the it kind of represents the, the enough, just enough uh, scenario to prevent that collapse of the universe, right? And that's why you know it got a lot of attention and from here let me also derive a very important parameter which will uh, be uh, important to look at what kind of universe that we are living that is if you uh, get the first Friedman equation for the k equals zero case and doesn't matter which of the case so, so anyway if it is if the k equals zero this is the Friedman equation that you can write because that last term with the minus sign will be zero because k equals zero right from that you can actually one you know that one over r dr over dt is the Hubble parameter where you can write it as h square t because you have a square here and from here you can uh, get an expression for the density rho t which is equal to 3h square t over 85g, right? Now, this quantity has a very specific name and plays a very important role when, you know, talking about different models of the universe. And uh, that, this particular quantity is called as the critical density, which is uh, written in 3h square t over 85g. And uh, uh, just, I mean, I would actually remember this quantity because it is that much important. Even if you uh, go on to do a research in extragalactic astronomy to calculate various things, this critical density value will come into play. And I remember that I was searching for this when I was doing my research because you need this 
to define a lot of other things, critical density of the universe and this, this parameter or the, uh, the equation is very important in that sense because once you plug the, the current value of the Hubble constant, you can actually calculate the critical density, right? And I would uh, probably recommend you to test and find the critical density, right? Uh, because it should be a, an interesting exercise, right? Uh, so let me write it here so that you can check it. Because this critical density value will be an important parameter to understand what kind of universe that we are uh, can find the uh, critical density value of the universe using the let's say the value of h naught. Now for the value of h naught, I will give you down what is the value of h naught. Now currently it is considered as uh, sometimes people used to consider that as 70.4 but the the latest value that we have from the Planck CMB results I guess around 67.4 or something like that right now uh, this table right here kind of summarize uh, uh, everything that we have discussed for these last three models which are important that is DC term model pure radiation model and the Einstein DC term model these are the last three models that we have discussed, uh, which means for one model, we consider only the dark energy and then the radiation only the matter only the last one. So we basically uh, discuss the three types separately and for all these three types, we solve the differential equation to appropriate conditions where k equals zero and then find an expression for the scaling factor because once you find how the scaling factor is changing, so that is where you can understand what kind of universe and how the universe is expanding, right? So that's what we have found here. And once you know the value of the scaling factor, you know that how to calculate the Hubble parameter, right? So it's, uh, even you, we didn't do that. It's straightforward, you know, HT is one over dr over dt, you know, it's straightforward. So that's why I told you to remember the equation for the Hubble parameter and then the, the density, right? So this is actually, in all three cases, you would get the same value 3H naught squared over 8 phi G and that is the critical density as well. And uh, if you want to find a density at a later time, then you need to use uh, those three equations uh, that we had uh, you know, previously and plug values to those equations to get these and then uh, so those are actually all three modules that we discussed. The properties of all three modules that you could uh, get from uh, by solving those three equations, right? Oh, unfortunately, I have given the value of the critical density value here. This is actually the value is nine times ten to the power minus twenty seven kgm. Uh, so that is you know uh, kilo kilograms per cubic meter, and this is uh, what exactly you need to find. So I. Just ask you to find the critical basic value of the universe as using the value of H naught. So try this yourself and check whether you can get the same answer as well right, for the critical density. And uh, now let me uh, uh, look at uh, some of the things uh, based on this value of the critical density. Now, if you go and look at uh, the Friedman equation again. Right, this is a Friedman equation again. Now you can, uh, uh, if you use uh, these two equations, that is, uh, you can take this as h squared t. And then this 8 phi g over 3 term right here, if you look at this equation, 8 phi g over 3 term is right here, which means you can replace that in terms of the critical density, right? So using uh, this equations uh, 80 and 79, I 
チェーンしてすせばいいんじゃないのでバイクやそういうキャンバイクディスクリプトにクリションインディスクリプトにインタームスのクリティカルディンシティス。はい。ヒスクエアティータイムスロースイマイナスロオーバーロースイマイクルマイナスケーシースクエアドワークスクエア。And what that means is this gives you a very nice result actually to discuss if your current density of the universe is less than the critical density, then what would happen is、uh, if this is less than the critical density, for sure in the left hand side you will get a、uh, positive value, right? That means in the right hand side, k has to be minus one to become a positive value. So that's what I have written here. And what that means is if the critical universe has a density that is less than the critical density of the universe, and our universe is negatively curved, and how Hubble constant will never be zero, because you can see for sure there is a value for h, and then、uh, Also, the universe will expand forever. Like that, you can get a lot of information in terms of this when you look at the things、uh, comparing to critical density, right? And also, if the density is equal to the critical density, of course, this part will be zero. So that means k has to be zero. So the universe is spatially flat. And、uh, the other, on the other hand, if rho greater than rho c, so this will be a minus value. So that means k has to be positive. So the universe is positively curved, right? So those are the things that we can,、uh, you know, discuss in terms of the density parameter. And if you go further and look at this density parameter carefully, sorry,、uh, this is actually、uh, critical density.、Uh, using this、uh, value of the critical density, we can actually define something called density parameter. Right? So if you look at some of these cosmology books. Normally, they most of the time they talk things in terms of this density parameter, and density parameter is nothing special. It is actually defined in this way. So that is the ratio of the density components to the critical density. So that means you can actually define three density parameters: matter, radiation, and dark energy density parameters. That is the ratio between the matter density. To the critical density, matter density divided by critical density, right? In the same way, radiation density will be again the radiation radiation density parameter will be rho r divided by rho c. Rho c is the critical density, and uh, then uh, uh, again this omega lambda t, which is the density parameter for the dark energy, in the same way. Dark energy density divided by the critical density. So that's how you define the density parameter. So that is basically the density、uh, as a ratio of、uh, critical density. So that's basically how you define the density parameters. Now the the total density parameter is basically if you add these two these three together, omega m, omega r, and omega lambda, you can tell that that is the total density parameter. Now,、uh, if you look at the first Friedman equation, once again, this is a good exercise for you as well. If you look at the first Friedman equation, you can write this first Friedman equation in terms of this density parameter. Right. So, if you write that, this is what you would get. So, make sure that you also try this and get this value. Right. So, these calculations are not difficult. Right. So, these they are kind of straightforward. The only thing is you need to practice those how to do these calculations,、uh, which is again important. Make sure that you go to the first Friedman equation, and then take the density parameter and see whether you can obtain this equation. Right. So try it. If any of you cannot get it, then let me know. Right. So then I will explain how to do that. And then. Uh, uh, The the k cannot change its sign with the evolution of the universe. Right hand side of the equation cannot change either. Right, so that means、uh, if 
you look at the left hand side, all these are squared, H squared, R squared, and C squared. So only term that you need to be worried about the value of K, right? However, K cannot change its sign with the evolution of the universe, right? So remember the reason is that we are living in an isotropic and homogeneous universe. If you take a curvature, that will be the curvature, right? So you cannot change it with the time. So it's a constant. And uh, I mean, it's, it can have three values, but it has to be decided initially, right? So you cannot change it after that, something like that. So what that means is, uh, uh, once the, the sign of the K is uh, decided, then you cannot change the sign even in the right hand side, okay? because those two are equal. Right? What that means is, uh, if K, equal so let's let's take the right hand side uh, if uh, omega t or the density parameter is less than one then you will have a minus sign in the right hand side so which means k has to be minus one so which means we should be living in a negatively uh, curved universe and then uh, if uh, omega t or the density parameter is equal to 1, then we are living in a flat universe, right? k equals 0 universe, and the case will be when omega is less greater than 1, we are in a positively curved universe, which is k equal to plus 1, right? Now, what is interesting here is, uh, if you can find the value of density parameter, we can decide what kind of universe that we are living, whether it's positively curved, negatively curved, or flat. Right? So that's what we are going to look at now. And uh, to look at that, let's uh, discuss uh, very briefly about the other models of our universe. Right? Uh, so that is what, uh, what we have considered earlier is that there are three simple models uh, with uh, density which is equal to critical density and hence k equal to zero right so that's what we have considered earlier remember that in this uh, table right here these are the models that we considered each time our density will has equal to critical density and k equals zero right so that that makes sense we, we have just told that if the density is equal to critical density then the density parameter will be one and then it should be a k equals zero or a flat universe so that's what we have discussed up to now. However, there are other models that we can have, right? Uh, the, the thing is, when you have this, when you go for these other models, you have to solve this differential equation numerically, and because that, we are not going to do it now. But we will look at uh, some of the models. How these models looks like to solve it, right? And these are the. Uh, the models, if you you know numerically solve, these are the some of the results that we could have, and uh, there are actually some of the now this is where you have this uh, omega lambda zero less than zero and it is equal to zero and then greater than zero like that, and then uh, so these are called you know FRW more different FRW models uh, based on uh, you know different uh, values that we have for the k and also the, for the density parameter. Because one thing that I didn't mention here, you can actually convert the whole uh, whole uh, new you can make a whole new differential equation from here in terms of the density parameters and those uh, normalized scale parameter if you need and then you have to solve it uh, to get all these uh, values but I, I didn't explain it here but it is important that you know about different models that you can have if you uh, you know solve it numerically one thing that you can notice here in all these main, uh, models they have actually started from a, some sort of big bang at the end like right? you know this t is the cosmic time and R is the scaling factor now. And uh, here is that Einstein DC term model. So that is what I was trying to, you know, plot here as well, this model. So they have plotted better than me right here. So that plot is right here. 
Einstein DC thermodynamic model, where you have uh, K equals zero, and also uh, dark energy uh, term is equal to zero for the density, dark energy density parameter. And then uh, all these three types, where you can see that when uh, omega lambda zero is less than zero, they all start from a, some sort of big bang, which means initially you have a C scaling factor is kind of zero and then start to expand the universe. However, they all started to collapse again. So we know that it is not the model that uh, our universe, uh, uh, what we observe right now, we, what we are observing is an accelerating model. And initially this was the model that we thought that probably most uh, correct or most appropriate one for us before the discovery of the dark energy. However, now we know that this is the correct model, which is the an accelerating model, right? Which means universe has started to expand and then slowed down for a period. And now it is expanding due to the, the dominance of the dark energy. And uh, actually there are these other models you can explain one by one, which I will not uh, go through each and every one. So that's what I have mentioned here. Most of the models start with some sort of big bang, which means initially there was a, a you know, large uh, expansion from a point. So you think what expanded. So most of the models, you can see that they start from R equals zero and T equals zero, which is why it says that most of these models start from a big bang. And there are models that represent the universe that expand forever. It's known as big chill. So that means, so there are some models that tells you the universe will expand forever. And there is another type that which describes the oscillating universe. So they go up, go expanding and then contracting, expanding like that. And those type of universes are called big bounds. And uh, so these are just some of the models that you can get. Now, what is important for us here is what kind of uh, model that or what kind of universe actually that we are living. Now, currently, uh, with the information that we have, this model, which we call as lambda CDA model, uh, CDA means cold dark matter, and I will, I will explain it later. So that is the model that we believe that the best describe our own universe currently. That means this model is actually K equals zero, and lambda greater than zero, that means the dark energy. Uh, this is the model that we believe that we are currently living in. And this model is also known as the accelerating model. Of course, our universe is now accelerating. And it is this model right here, the accelerating one. And uh, uh, that's because we are now living in a dark energy dominated universe uh, and hence accelerating. So the, the name of this model is uh, called Lambda CDM model. So that's what I have mentioned here as well. Now, uh, just to let you know that when if you go for a research field like extra galactic astronomy, normally if you do some kind of research, then you need to mention what is the model of the universe that you are going to use because your values will change based on that, right? Now, what we normally use in nowadays is this lambda CDA model. Even if you go and you know sometimes read the research papers, they they at some point they will mention that all the calculations are done using lambda CDA model type. Right? So what that means is this particular model, right, accelerating model, and uh, because nobody will explain you in the inside these research papers what is lambda CDA model. It is now that you have to understand what that means. And uh, this uh, CDM, where the word CDM represents the cold dark matter. Actually, this name uh, is very, uh, very nicely uh, imposed here because the word itself includes two of the biggest mysteries uh, now we have at heart of current cosmology, that is dark energy and dark matter, right? Even though we talk about these two, we still don't know how they are made of what kind of things that they are. Only thing that we know is that dark matter is certainly an attractive, uh, very similar to gravity. 
I mean, it should be gravity because uh, it's uh, something that invisible matter that gives you the same effect as the gravity. And the dark energy, on the other hand, is a kind of a repulsive force uh, which uh, helps to accelerate the expansion of the universe. And therefore, it should be a repulsive force. So it should be some kind of anti gravity, right? But we don't know what it is exactly. So that's why we used to tell that these are two of the biggest my mysteries. So, I mean, to include that dark matter as well, we used to name it as lambda CDM model. And uh, this model is also known as the standard, standard model in the Big Bang cosmology. And uh, now when it comes to the values, now once you accept this as the standard or the currently accepted model, we should have uh, various ways to estimate these key cosmological parameters in the current universe, right? Now the key cosmological parameters are, you know, the Hubble constant, and also these density parameter values. Now, as of now, the current values that we know from up to now is for the matter, uh, the density parameter for the matter is equal to 0 0.27, and the ra radiation is uh, pretty much close to zero. And then for the dark energy, uh, density parameter is. And dark, dark energy density parameter is 0 0.73. And it is very interesting to see that once you add up all these three, so they will be very pretty much close to one. And that's why we used to tell that the geometry of the universe is approximately flat according to the current known uh, information that we have, right? Now, it is uh, also very interesting to now think about that who, who makes the universe in, in a such a way that we are living in a flat universe, right? Because there are three and who balance it nicely in this way, right? Now, this actually goes on to talk about different theories like, you know, inflationary theory and those kind of things, which I, because I, I will not go into too much into details, but some of this information about the infl inflationary theory and all these things should be available in that last chapter that I asked you to do as a reading assignment, right? And uh, by having all this information, now we have learned throughout, you know, different mathematics and all these equations in this particular chapter. What we can summarize about the history of the universe is mentioned here. That is, uh, our history of the universe can be divided mainly into three parts or three periods. The first part is called the radiation dominated universe. Now this period is a very short lived one and only lasted for 50,000 years after the Big Bang. Now you may be thinking about um, what I am even talking because I used to tell that it is a very short lived and lasted for 50,000 years, right? Now this is, uh, Actually, 50,000 years is a very short period in terms of the cosmological scale, right? So that's what you have to keep in mind because we are talking about a, a period of 13.7 billion years as the age of the universe, and I am talking only 50,000 years here. So that, that should be a relatively short period compared to that time frame, right? So that is the idea. And, uh, uh, this uh, a, this era of the universe actually nicely modeled uh, using this radiation only model, which is 8.4.4 here in the north, right? So it's a nice approximation for that period of the, the evolution of the universe. And then we come into this matter dominated era, which lasted for about 9.8 billion years, which is a, a long period. And this is why actually this DC term model, which is uh, uh, purely previously, you know, accepted even as one of the, uh, the more appropriate models to describe, uh, describe our universe uh, before the, the discovery of the dark energy. Uh, and because of that, for this period, this DC term model, Einstein DC term model would be a very good approximation. And then uh, the current, dark energy dominated universe. This is the universe that we are currently living. 
which is the dark energy, is a dark energy dominated universe. And you can also see it from these current density parameters, they are matter has 0 0.27 and 70% of the, uh, I mean, 70% of the universe is like dark energy dominated, right? And uh, so we are living in this dark energy dominated universe, and we had the module called a dark energy only DC module, uh, which uh, is uh, again a good uh, model that we have discussed earlier, uh, which nicely approximates this dark energy era, right? Now, Finish uh, to finish our lecture today. Uh, this graphical representation, and this is uh, I took this from NASA uh, website, uh, shows very nicely the timeline of our current universe. That is, here is the Big Bang, where yeah, it has happened, and there is a uh, this is a very you know uh, place where you get you started everything got started to expand from there. And there is a period actually from here to here that universe has expanded uh, a huge amount of amount by it's in a very, very short time period. And this era is called as an inflationary universe. So inflation means, you know, expand rapidly within a very short time period. Right? So that era is called inflationary era. And uh, this uh, Different eras may have explained a little bit more what has happened in these kind of eras in that chapter 29 that I asked you to read. Right? And then, uh, then you have this uh, afterglow light pattern, which is 375,000 years uh, after the Big Bang. And this is where you get the, you probably see from this color, uh, the image, the color that you have, this is where you. Uh, have the cosmic microwave background and it has now we are observing from here because of that it is red shifted and we see it as a microwave a cosmic microwave background but that is where uh, you have this cosmic microwave background radiation and then there is an era called dark ages after that and after that you can see that uh, galaxies and all these stars and stuff now the first star is, uh, you know, born around here, around uh, 400 million uh, years after the Big Bang. And then it, this time scale continues and this is the era where the galaxies and planets developed. Right? Now we are right here. You can see that there was a rapid expansion like an inflation and then it slowed down like that and then after that, now it is taking on an accelerator, right? And you can see that tiny little galaxies are in this, this region. So this galaxy started to form around this area. And this is a very, very nice uh, uh, diagram that gives you the complete picture what you have learned up to now, right? And uh, so the NASA itself had a nice uh, description about uh, this picture or the diagram. Uh, so I copied and pasted it here because I think it explains in the best way. Uh, this, this diagram is nicely explained from their own words, so I put it here for you to read. And uh, so this will uh, conclude this, uh, all the lectures that I want to talk with you about the cosmology and I hope that you get uh, enough knowledge and uh, Right, so anybody have any questions here?